All right. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming. I see there's a few of you here already, and maybe some other people will join us. Maybe they'll catch this on the recording. Uh, but as promised, we're going to pick up where we left off last time. So let's go check that out. Uh, this is what we created last time, and I played around with it after we were done. And I, you know, I found a few things where I <clears throat> would say there's some room for improvement. And so today we're going to endeavor to make some improvements to this. All right, so let's um, start off with sort of a quick recap of where we were. So this is the same code that is available online. Uh, the only thing I changed since I ended the video is to turn down some of the speeds on the projectiles. And right now it's a very basic method of projectile spawning. Uh, I also made it so you can press space bar to shoot, which makes it a little easier. And I was starting to think about why this isn't, why it feels so hard uh, to play. One of the reasons I think is you need to be able to use the space bar because it's kind of taxing to use the mouse to aim and to shoot at the same time. I'm not very good. Um, but also I realized we need to be able to do certain things like back up. And the way that these guys are aiming and shooting at us is maybe a little bit unfair. So today we're gonna change things around. We're gonna spawn enemy, we're gonna make different enemy types uh, and we're gonna spawn things in a different order. If uh, you guys have any trouble hearing me or there's some problems that I should know about, please mention it in chat. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as things go. You're, I don't guarantee I'll be able to answer all the questions that come up, if any questions come up, but if you have any questions, you can feel free to, uh, to put them in the chat and I'll see what I can do. So I'm gonna try to fit uh, as much as I can to 45 minutes. I'm following a looser script than last time, so hopefully We'll stay on track here and get some stuff done. My goals for today, um, first of all, is to show you some good practices for adding sound. Um, second of all, I'm going to try to improve the player experience, both in terms of the way he looks, so it looks a little bit more uh, engaging, uh, and also in the way it plays. We're gonna try to make him, first of all, be able to back up instead of just use hit the brakes. Um, have a sort of, because I realize in a lot of these games, one of the favored mechanics is to sort of fly backwards while you shoot and so we're going to try to smooth that out a little bit and uh, there's other ideas too uh, I have some other ideas too if we have time but those so we'll add we'll change the enemy a bit and we'll add hopefully two different types of enemy sound and a little bit of improvement to the player that's our kind of goals for this little chunk of time and if I go if I get that all done then there's more time I'll add something else and if there isn't we'll continue next time I'm going to keep going with this, I think. Uh, I think a lot of students gave me some positive feedback. I even got some positive feedback from a couple of random strangers who uh, were like-minded computer science teachers that said, hey, I found this and it's great, thanks. So I'm going to keep putting them out there as long as people are interested. All right, so let's start off um, by adding um, some sound. And to add sound, there's a few things you can try, consider. Um, I'm always looking for good sources of places to download sounds and unlike graphics where there's a few really good websites for free game uh, assets, if you will, I haven't found many good ones for sound. Uh, if you search the internet, I'm going to do this with you right now just so you can, I would usually search for something like laser sound, there we go, I already typed it, laser sound for game wave. You want to type wave, wave tells them that you're actually looking for a downloadable file and mp3s are actually not so good for sound effects. So I have a whole lesson on why, but I'll just get into, without getting into it, uh, waves are huge, so they're not good for music, but they're high quality and they're uncompressed, so they're good for sound effects. So um, let's see if I can find that. No, this website was broken, I believe. Oh, it's working now. So there's some cool sounds here. Now, one of the problems I always found is that when I find um, a laser sound I like, like this one, it's quick. But it's this really long, drawn out, What what is that? So if I download this, and a lot of these sites, oh no, not this one. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna use the one that I already downloaded because I wanted to get one with you guys so that, uh, let's see if I can find one here. Uh, oh, this should do it, is this one? Yeah, let's grab that one. Uh, so I wanna do one with you because I wanna show you how I sort of doctor these sounds. If you've never heard of Audacity before, you should go find out about it right now, Audacity. Uh, I'll show it to you in a minute so you can see how it's spelled, is great. Audacity, I think I already saved this, but let's save it. Um, downloads is fine. So, can't be downloaded securely. What are you telling me here? Okay, I'll, I'll take it. 
I'll be okay with that. Um, so I have this file, it's in my downloads, um, and I'm just gonna open it in a program called Audacity. And this is the moment where I go, where did Audacity go? Sorry guys, it's there. I don't know why it didn't show up. Um, so I'm gonna, op I'll do it this way. It didn't give me the open with option. This is Audacity. Audacity is free. And if this looks at all intimidating to you, don't be intimidated. It has lots of buttons, but most of them are really simple um, or maybe it's things you don't need. So I'm gonna grab this from downloads. And I just wanna sort of show you my process here. So here is that sound effect. And if I play it, you can see it's a little longer than maybe I want it to be. It kind of trails off. And I will, I like fast sound effects. It also is lacking bass. And you guys probably can't hear that because you're kind of hearing it go through my microphone. Um, but it totally lacks bass. It's got no low end. So uh, I'm going to do a few things to this. First of all, I'm going to select it, just like you might imagine you could. Uh, and I'm actually going to go up here to Effect. And I'm going to change the bass and treble. And I'm simply going to turn up the bass a little bit to try to get a little bit of low end to come out of this and maybe even add a little extra volume to it. And if I click apply, suddenly I can try. That's got some bass to it. I like that better. A little maybe too much. It kind of clipped there. Turn it down a bit. Try it again. Still clipping. Good enough. All right. So um, if I go like that. Perfect. So I gave it, I made it a little more satisfying. I actually want to shorten it a little too. So exactly how you might imagine, you can actually select it. Control A will select, whoop, Control A will select all. And then you can actually grab it here and actually just sh mm, shorten it. What am I doing here? Oh, uh, no, it's in effect also. Uh, we're going to speed it up. So that would be change speed. I want to increase it, I want to make it 10% faster. So I'm going to say speed multiplier 1.1, click OK, and you notice that it just got a little shorter. And now I'm happy with it. Good, it's faster, it's shorter, that's going to be my shooting sound. OK, uh, and of course, if you don't like that shooting sound, that's great, you can add your own. I'm going to upload this project when I'm done in the form that it's in, and then you can do with it as you please. I'm going to export this as a wave. I don't like to do save as, I like to do export. And I'm going to go straight to the folder where I have my um, code saved, which is Dropbox code. And this one is called, whoop, I uh, just clicked too fast. Sorry, guys. Export wave. And I'm going to find my project folder for real this time. And this is our current one that we're working on. And if you go into the sounds folder, that's where it's going to look for it. So it's called fire.fire3.wave. Uh, I'm just going to leave it called fire.wave because I don't have a one or a two. And I'm going to save it. And uh, it's got some credit for the person who made it. I'll leave that there. That's fine with me. It's showing you the metadata, you know, what's included inside your file and aside from just the music. And all right, so there we go. Um, so now we have a sound effect that we can play. So now I'm going to show you. Let's go to Greenfoot. So Audacity is great. That's the last time I'm going to talk about Audacity. Um, but if you are um, Audacity, A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y, it is an amazing program and it's free. It can do everything from simple little mods like this to if you play a musical instrument, you can record it and add reverb and, and echo and, and all sorts of wonderful, otherwise expensive things. And it's all free. All right. Uh, yes, let's. Oh, I don't want to save the project. No, that's fine. OK, so back in here, we're going to now deal with sound. If you've ever tried to play sound in Greenfoot before, you've probably run into this sort of problem where it doesn't sound quite right. So I'm going to show you how most of you probably have done it before. And then I'm going to show you a better way. So the, I'm going to put the actual uh, sound effect in player because the player is doing the shooting and this is going to be a shooting sound. And so in player over here, um, we already have a shoot method, right? Here's our shoot method. And our goal is going to be to make the shoot method make a sound, as well as, of course, we're already adding a projectile and it's going to shoot towards the enemy. So we need to actually create an object called a green foot sound. So just like the way we would have created an image, up here I'm going to make a sound. Okay, so I'm going to say private green foot sound. 
and I'm going to call this shoot sound. I like to name my sound objects with something that hints that they are sounds, so not just shoot. It makes it a lot clearer what you're talking about when it has a verb and an and the fact that it's a sound, right? So it's not just shoot, it's shoot sound. It, you, especially because sometimes you might have Booleans called things like shoot. You don't want to get them, it's much easier, obviously, if your variables are well named. So I have a shoot sound here, and just like I initialized image in the constructor, I'm going to make shoot sound equal to a new green sound, and it was called fire.wave if I recall correctly and so it's now going to open this when the player is constructed it's really important that you load these in the constructor you don't want to be playing new green you can say to greenfoot to play it like this and to open it from the disk each time but it's going to really slow you down so you don't want to do it this way you always want to do it this way sorry you always want to declare it Yep, up here in the class variable section, right? This means it's available to the whole class. It's not going to go away when the player finishes running a method. Um, and then we declare it here and we initialize it here. And then by the time the action starts in act, we're never having to load any files. That's why we load the graphics here and the now the sound here. So what you would think to make this shoot would be something really simple. If you look at the Greenfoot sound API, which we're not going to look at right this moment, it's really straightforward. Uh, it, the command we're looking for is dot play. So it seems like it should be really easy. So let's try it shoot sound dot play. All right, so let's see what happens now if we do that. Uh, I'm gonna take the enemies out of the world for a minute just because they're gonna be annoying for what we, today we're gonna make them better anyway. And for now, I just wanna test out other things. So let's make our world a peaceful one. I don't know how well you guys can hear that, but what's happening is when I press shoot the first time, it shoots, and then if I press spacebar, watch, I'm gonna press it a few times, you're only gonna hear the shoot sound once. Listen to this. That's not what's happening, right? It should be pow, pew, 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 but instead it's pew, wait till it finishes playing, pew, wait till it finishes playing, pew, wait till it finishes playing. What's going on here is that Greenfoot only has the capability of playing one sound once, which doesn't work well when you're trying to make a rapid sounding firing thing. So let me show you a trick that I came up with that works like a charm. Declaring a single sound will never work. The first thing I tried, uh, which I thought should work, uh, was something like, um, if shoot sound dot is playing, I thought this was clever. I said, if shoot sound is playing, oh, that's not it. If shoot sound is playing, then shoot sound dot stop, and then shoot sound dot play. Did I mess up my brackets? Yes, I did. Uh, if shoot sound is playing, yeah, I have two here. Okay, so it was it was. Um, Shoe sound, that sounds like I'm trying to make my cute dog go away. Shoe, uh, shoot sound, there we go. So I thought this would work, right? If it's playing, stop it and you know, then play it again. So let's see how that sounds. Doesn't work, same nonsense. So I used to think that it was impossible. So let me show you what I do. And I teach this as a separate lesson, um, but it's a good trick. Uh, we are actually going to create an array. We're gonna create an array of Greenfoot sound instead of just one. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna change the name of this to shoot sounds, and I'm gonna make it an array of Greenfoot sound. So it's the same thing we declared before, except instead of making one, I'm gonna make 20. And this is how. I'm gonna say, um, first of all, now it's an array, so that won't work. I'm gonna say shoot sounds equals new Greenfoot image, I mean Greenfoot sound, 20. Now, 20 is an arbitrary number. I, you know, let's pick a smaller number. Let's pick 12. 12 is an arbitrary number I came up with. I'm gonna load this exact sound into memory 12 times as 12 separate Greenfoot sound objects. And then each time I want to play the sound, I'm gonna play the next consecutive one until I get to the last one. And then I'm gonna reset back to zero, which will have finished playing by then. And it works, so watch this.
I used to think this was an impossible task, but it turns out it's not. Shoot sounds I. So I am basically going to use this for loop to go through each item in my array, which is now a space that can hold 12 green foot sounds. And I'm going to make them all exactly the same thing, but they're not the same object. There's 12 of them. So now I'm going to play them one at a time. In order to do that, I need to keep track of which one I played most recently. So I'm going to make an integer to go along with this called um, sound index. Okay. And here I'm going to set sound index to zero. Oops. Sound index equals zero. And every time I want to play a sound, so let's go down here where I was trying to play this sound here. And let's get rid of that because that didn't work. Uh, I'm going to say um, play, oh, sorry, shoot sounds uh, sound index. So or whatever the next sound is that I'm supposed to play, it'll be zero the first time, then one, then two, then three. Shoot sounds at sound index dot play. Okay, and I need to increase my index. So I'm going to say shoot uh, sound index plus plus. And I want to make sure that I don't go out of bounds. After all, I only made 12 spaces. So I'm going to say uh, shoot, sorry, oops, if sound index is equal to shoot sounds dot length. So if I've reached the end, then sound index equals zero. All right, so if I, I've made an array of sounds, they're all the same, but I want to play them one at a time. So the, every time I tell it to shoot, I'm going to say whatever my sound index is, starting at zero, play that sound. Get ready to play the next one. If I'm at the last one, go back to zero. I'm betting that 12 sound effects will not play in the 0 0.7 seconds that the sound effects length is. So let's try that now. That is much more satisfying. Much, much more sad. Now we still are, we, ha we made a cooldown last time, so I can't quite keep up with my space bar, but if I shoot one, two, three, I get three sound effects. And this, of course it's rotating through those awesome sound effects. And so there you go. We, sound, we solved a big, what I used to consider a big green foot problem with a simple array. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to add. Now sound effects are pretty dull without some music. So let's add some music to our game. I have some downloaded music here that I got from a, another, you know, here's some free music for your game site. And I'll note that the author's name is in the metadata of the music and that I will put it in the metadata of the project because that off, that artist who did leave their work available for free deserves credit. And I hope you, my students, realize the importance of doing the same because one day you're going to make some cool stuff and you're going to want other people to say, hey, look at that thing that he made or that she made. Um, okay, so let me just find those. Got them right over here. So I have a pair of uh, music files, and if you played my previous space game, the one that um, the one that uh, I posted on the Greenfoot Gallery, you've probably heard these tracks before. But they're good tracks, and it's hard to find good tracks, so we're going to use them. And uh, let's see. So we're going to go back to our folder here. One second, let me pull it out for you. Where did it go? This project, I think I, one second, I think I just uh, navigated away from it here. All right, so here's my, here are my project files. Um, so we go into sounds and so far all we have is fire.wave. I'm gonna paste two more files here, which are, oh, I had two files here, one second, sorry guys. All right, so these are called factory recoded and uh, ooh, co oh, I don't know why it named it copy. If you're wondering, oh, because I copied the ones that were called copy. What? Oh, sorry, everybody. I copied into the same folder. It made copies. Uh, history. All fixed now. Let's just copy over the right ones. There we go. So, um, no, not, not move.
One last try, I'll get this right. Copy here, perfect. So I have factory recoded and Nightwings recoded. I should mention why these are called recoded. I downloaded the original versions of them, but they were causing issues with Greenfoot. Sometimes sounds cause Greenfoot issues and it has to do with the way they're encoded, but it's a really easy fix. I open it in Audacity, it was already an MP3, but I open it in Audacity, Audacity unpacks that MP3 and MP3 is compressed. Audacity unpacks it, I do export, I export it as an MP3 and Audacity re-encodes it and now it works perfectly. So that's why these are called recoded. And I'm gonna use these as my music. So to get music to play, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to make kind of a music loop. So by a music loop, I mean it's gonna play song one and then it's gonna play song two and then it's gonna play song one and then it's gonna play song two for as long as the user's playing. Obviously, if you want, you can have fine control over it and make it play in any order you want. You can let the user choose the music like I do in my space game that you can check out on the Greenfoot Gallery. There's lots of ways to do it, uh, but I'm gonna show you a simple way now so you'll get a, a taste of the code of what it looks like to play music in a loop. Uh, so, in game world, uh, right now I don't really have a place where it's sort of music, right? Like, there's no section for it. Uh, it's going to be something that I'm going to start in uh, the beginning, but that I want to have happen when necessary. In other words, as the as one song is finished, I want to figure out, um, you know what, let's stick to one for now and I'll add the second one if I have time because I don't want, it'll take some extra coding. Let's keep it simple and then if we have time, we'll go back to that. I think that's the best approach here. So let's start off by declaring the objects that we need. Uh, we're going to need, we're going to need sound. Uh, private green foot sound and um, let's call it uh, song one because hopefully we'll have a chance to add song two but I'm not gonna make it an array for now I might change this to an array later but I want to keep it simple so let's do that and then let's say song one equals new green foot sound and it was called uh, Night winds recoded. So night winds recoded dot mp3. When you're typing file names, it's always best to keep all of your file names lowercase in your actual folder. So they're lowercase when you type them. Your file names have to be typed exactly. If you have a capital where there isn't supposed to be a capital, it won't find them. So make sure that you type those carefully. So I'm going to say night winds recoded dot mp3 dot uh, mp3. So now I have this file. Now I want and this is really important. I want the music to start when the user clicks run. If I put it into the constructor, watch what happens. If I put this into the constructor and I run this, even when I reset it and I want quiet, the music just starts. I want it to start when I click run, but it's starting as soon as I compile my world. and it's already annoying me and I've just barely started. So we gotta do something about that. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is turn off my speaker for a second so you can stop hearing it until I fix it. We're gonna move where this code is. Uh, first of all, let's just remove it from here so it'll actually stop playing. There. Um, we're going to create a method that you've probably never heard of but is actually part of Greenfoot and that is called the started method. When the world starts, in other words, when the run button is clicked, there is a method called starts that gets called. This also happens if you're switching worlds and the world starts, so it doesn't have to be from the run button, but every time a world starts, this method will automatically get called. It's actually in the API for world where you probably never noticed it before. So here's the API of world, and there it is, started. This method is called by the Greenfoot system when the execution has started, that's really useful. And I'll confess that I've been doing Greenfoot for eight years and I've only known about this method for three or four. I don't know if it was added in at a later version or if I just hadn't noticed it, but there it is, started. This is where you wanna start your music because then it will start when you run that. So what we actually wanna do is start the music in the this started method that we're about to add, public, very easy to add, public void started. And by creating it, just by putting it there, it will automatically get called by the system. So public void started, and I'm going to uh, play the song here. 
And in the act method, I want to check on the music because I want it to play. Uh, oh, we're just going to do one. So why don't we just do play loop? Later, I'll show you how you can check if one's playing and then play the next one. But again, I don't want to spend half of this 45 minutes on it. So let's just do when it started, play loop. There is a uh, opposite, and that is to stop the music when the world is stopped. So if we add public void stopped, which as you might imagine is the exact opposite of started, then here we can say song one dot stop. And this way, when you actually click the stop button, it'll stop. So let's go see that. Let's make sure this runs. So now when I reset it, nothing happens. When I click run, how well you guys can hear that, but it's playing the music. And when I pause it, it stops the music again, right? Because the world stopped executing. Whenever the world starts, it'll start the music. And whenever you pause, it'll end the music. Unfortunately, to my knowledge, there's no way to have it resume where you left off. So if you have a long music track and it gets paused, I don't think there's a way to make it continue. Although I would be thrilled if somebody could prove to me otherwise and show me how we could make this continue. All right, um, so that is um, sound. So we've added some shooting sound effects, we've added some music, so now that's too loud. Let's actually fix that. The projectile shot is, I don't know if you heard that, but I turned up the music so you could hear the music and suddenly the projectile is way too loud. So we can actually do, deal with this, uh, oops, it's not in the, it's in the projectile? No, it's in the player because it was shoot, sorry. Uh, we can actually deal with this really easily when we created that sound effect. There is a volume associated with a sound effect. Just like you change the color of an image, you can change the volume of a sound. It, it works kind of in the same way. So uh, whenever I load a shoot sound here, I'm going to turn down its volume. Shoot sounds I dot set volume. And it's out of 100, I believe. So if we set the volume to 50, now we should have much better. All right, so now we have better sound. Let's get a little bit of an improvement to the player. The one thing I thought of with the player was I wasn't really happy that he was always sort of a green rect a green triangle. And it makes it hard to even see sort of where the back of you is. So what I decided I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint a little bit of orange on his sort of back here. Let's do this with a little bit of transparency. This is paint.net, by the way. If you haven't ever seen paint.net, uh, I highly recommend checking it out. It is um, it is a very useful little paint program that's approximately 50 billion times better than Microsoft Paint. It isn't really that much more complicated. Um, it has transparency right off the bat, making it fundamentally better. I don't understand how to this day and age regular Microsoft Paint does not support transparency. Anyhow, I'm just going to draw a little bit of uh, sort of dots along here, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, but I'm just going to, you know, quickly make a little pattern here where every few pixels I'm going to put in a dot. And this way we'll easily be able to identify which side's the back of the ship. Um, and I think that'll improve the visuals substantially. And we're going to do something else too in just a second. So this one I'm just going to save. So now this will, uh, since I'm saving it in the folder I believe that we're working in, let's just check. Uh, if I refresh this now, maybe it's in the wrong folder. I don't see it. One sec. Oh, it's in my script one. Let's just put this in the real one. Images, player, save, replace it. Yes. Okay. And I don't know how so that one's pretty subtle. Uh, even if I refresh it. That looks subtle. You can see it. I can see it on my own screen. Uh, you might not be able to see it, you know, because it's small for you. That's fine. Uh, but you'll see why I'm going to do that in a second. I'm going to make a second one here. Uh, and I'm going to save this one as player excel. And this is going to be the player when he's accelerating. And what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to draw a much darker and brighter um, sort of orange tinge coming out of that. Right? So where there was this sort of um, little pattern there's now going to be and it'll look like you know he's firing up his sort of engine like things uh, it makes for a neat effect and what we're going to do is we're going to make this go off whenever the player um, whenever the player is accelerating so let's just finish that quick I was going to do just a solid line but I thought this would be nice and then let's do a second line in the back of just sort of yellow 
dots every few bigs. I think that'll, even though you won't see it if you just carefully look, I think as it's moving around, that'll look good. And if I had lots of time, I would make more frames and have them like uh, glitter back and forth. You could do a lot more with this, but I think this will give us a good sort of uh, secondary image that we can swap back and forth to. So let's see how we can implement that. So what I want is that when the player is pressing the up arrow, we're going to make two changes here. One, when the player is pressing the up arrow to accelerate, remember our game used to sort of accelerate it. So let me turn down that volume. But when, when we're accelerating, um, it's getting faster, right? And then we kind of let go and it decelerates. Well, I want to make it so that when you're moving, when you're holding the up arrow, you can see like orange firing out from behind you. So let's go into the player code. Oh, and I think I mentioned earlier, the other thing I want to do is make it so the player can move backwards. Right now I have it so the player stops, um, but I want him to be able to move backwards basically at the same speed that he moves forward. So we're going to change some things around a little bit, both in the terms of the way he moves over here where we are figuring out his acceleration, right? And um, we're going to make him, when he is moving forward, W, we're going to switch the image. All right, so the first thing I want to do is have two images here. Right, so we never want to have a situation where we are swapping back, where we're calling commands like this in act. Okay, setting a new Greenfoot image while the acting is running is generally a terrible idea because it's accessing the disk and it's a pretty heavy operation to be running. It's not the kind of thing you want to have happening over and over and over again. So I'm going to have an image here and I'm going to have a second image. called Excel image, right? And that's gonna be the image that I use when I'm accelerating. And I'm going to load it here. I'm not gonna set it as the image because it's not my image for right now, but I'm gonna load it here. I'm gonna say Excel image equals new image, uh, Greenfoot image. And I named it player underscore Excel dot, J, uh, dot PNG. So I haven't actually set it. I'm not gonna call a set command right now because it's not appropriate. But what I am going to do is I'm going to grab the set image image command and I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to put it into all these sort of situations where um, we kind of want to, um, well, we're, we're either going to be starting to accelerate or we're going to be not accelerating. And so either way, it's going to be somewhere in here that we change our image. So if we are pressing this, we don't want to use that image. But if we are, for example, breaking, then we want to use that image. And if we are naturally decelerating, we want to use that image. And if we're here, if we are using W, then we want to use the Excel image, right? Which is that other one that I created. So now when I press the W, it should switch to that one. And if I don't, it should let go. So now we should be able to see that effect. Let's see how that looks. It's there, but it's more subtle than I would have liked. So let's let's make it less subtle. Let's make it bright, and let's just add some lot some bigger things. Because obviously, I thought that was going to stand out, and it didn't. Let's try a nice big line of bright red. That will stand out. In fact, just to make sure, let's make some more right here. Now better be visible. All right, I didn't like that it wasn't balanced. This goes one more down. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so pardon me if your color choices are way better than mine. I'm not an artist, but this should at least get the point across. So now, if I run this, when I'm accelerating, there you go, now you can see it, right? Whenever I push down the button, um, you can see which way he's coming from. It, it's a small difference, but it makes this feel a lot alive. I, it really makes the whole thing feel different when it responds to you like that. I've had examples of this before where uh, I've made multiple things so like as you're accelerating it's harder, it has like a bigger flame coming out the back, you could take this to the nth degree, but just with this simple two image swapping going on here we already have better functionality. Alright so let's improve it next by, um, let's improve it next um, by making it able to go backwards. Because right now we have the downward arrow for kind of like breaking, but I think that's a waste. I don't think that's really necessary. I want the downward arrow to instead be uh, decelerating, first breaking, but then eventually actually going backwards, so not stopping at zero. In other words, we're actually gonna make our speed floor uh, negative two, or sorry, negative speed 
whatever their positive speed is, so if they can move forward at a speed of three, we're gonna make their negative, the negative of that, uh, their fastest backward speed. All right, let me um, just turn it, there we go, music stopped. No, the music did not stop. There it goes. Okay, so let's see how we're gonna do that. Well, right now we have Excel and we have breaking D cell that says, speed can't go less than 0, 0.0. Well, I think it can now. And so instead of saying it can go to, um, so it's gonna be the higher of zero and the current, right. So we wanna be able to go down as low as negative speed. So now uh, that should work, except that our natural D cell won't. So let's see if that actually works. So now I should be able to, oh, I'm moving towards the mouse. That's gonna be a problem. We have to face the mouse, but not necessarily move towards the mouse. All right, let's see if we can fix that up. So if you run into a little issue like this, what you wanna be able to do here, and this is a really useful thing Greenfoot has, you wanna be able to see the status of one of your variables. If I right click on this and I inspect it, I can actually check out its variables. And the variable that I'm concerned with here is speed. And I think my other method, I think my, my deceleration might be messing with it or something. We'll get to that in a second. I, I didn't script this part out, so I'm going off the cuff here. So hopefully I'll figure it out pretty quick. Um, but right now the speed says zero, zero. And I'm actually gonna see if I can get this to fit on, get this, Grifo doesn't always wanna go to sort of split screen view. Um, it often disagrees with that, but there, that'll do. So that should, there. Now we can see them sort of side by side here. And I don't know how well you can see it because I can't make this text larger, but we have this speed variable right here. And when I run it now, I wanna see how that gets affected when I press up. So up, like you can see, I'm getting all the way to four. Down, hmm, it's going to, it gets into a negative number, but it seems to be stuck there. I think it's somehow going back up. So let's see what's happening with our speed. Speed four, so you can see it's back to zero. And when I hold, backwards nothing happened s nothing happened so let's go check out our code and see if we can figure out where that went wrong all right so if we press w great but if i'm pressing s i want to be the maximum of my current speed minus d cell that's right that's well times break factor well let's get rid of the break factor because we're not breaking anymore Mm. speed times break factor break factor is two so you were able to go twice as, yeah that makes sense it makes sense that you could slow down faster than you could speed up except when you got past zero interesting i should have thought this one should have put some code to this first but we'll figure it we'll make it work um let's just instead say let's get rid of this this is wonderful when it works, but let's go through this one step at a time. If speed is greater than zero. So if we're currently moving forward and you press S, then we should probably break. So speed minus equals D cell times break, what was it called? Break factor. Okay, and we wanna make sure that that's at least zero. So uh, we'll just do this. I can turn it into a math.min math.max later, but let's think it through. If speed, oh, we'll just let it decel at that rate. That's fine. You know, if, they, if it decelerates past zero um, a little bit uh, too fast, that's okay. So if speed is greater than zero, we're gonna decrease it. Uh, else if um, speed is less, then negative, ooh, that's the problem. We can't use negative speed, negative max speed, that's it. Negative max, I think that was my problem last time. I think I used speed in place of max speed. Oh, sorry guys, I just saw the comments now where you said that sound almost broke your ear. I guess that was before I turned it down. Sorry about that. My apologies for your ears. Okay, so if speed is less than or equal to negative max speed, so this would imply that we don't have a positive speed. If you have a positive value for speed, that means you're currently accelerating, we wanna accelerate less. If your speed is not greater than zero, but your 
still able to go slower, then we want to just keep moving, but not as quickly. So it'll just be speed. This will be the same as accelerating. So we're not going to be able to, it'll just make it so that as you're pass, passing zero, it feels natural. Uh, so minus equal accel, or just decel, I guess. And let's make it the same as accelerating. Minus equals excel. Okay, so that's our, our second um, condition here. And then finally, um, the other situation is the in between. So else, then it wouldn't do anything. No, then it would just maintain. Yeah, that's fine. Um, speed equals negative max speed. That'll keep it from that'll keep it from going. Uh, try like this if speed is less than negative max speed sorry guys I just have to think this through if speed is less than then all right that should make sense I hope and if not I'll just put this detail aside and fix it afterward and post it for you but let's just see and then naturally um, this one should go towards zero from any direction so well, let's just turn it into two if statements again. Um, if speed is greater than zero, speed my equals math dot, it's gonna go towards zero, so it's gonna be math dot max zero uh, speed minus cell. So in other words, just slow down if uh, else. So if speed is less than or equal to zero, speed equals math dot min. Again, zero speed plus cell. I hope that makes sense because we're crossing zero in both directions. Let's go find out. Run. Well, I've made it more broken, not less broken. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with that because it didn't work the way I thought it would and I should have pre-coded it. Uh, so I'll fix that. Um, we're sort of running low on time anyway. Let me just give this one more look over and then I will call it and fix it after. And we'll review what we did here today. Um, so we're, if the W speed equals the higher of max speed, speed plus Excel, set image to the accelerating image. If I'm braking, if my speed is positive, shrink it. If it's so that should be also that should be higher. And if speed is less than oh there it is. Uh, it still won't go backwards, but at least my forward momentum is going to figure out why S isn't letting me move backwards. Where's the movement? Speed equals this. Move speed. Okay, so as long as I set speed, we should be good. I think the S, I'm missing something. If anyone sees my mistake, feel free to shout it out. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to call it review what we've done and I'll post the fix as soon as I figure it out later. How's this be is That was right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I can move backwards. All right. Whew. Starting to doubt myself there. That'll actually, I think, make this game uh, much better. Unfortunately, we've run out of time to add the enemies that I want to add, so I'm going to leave that for next time. Uh, but. Good, so we can move forward now, and we can move backward, and we can shoot towards the mouse.
yes, it was it was uh, confusing me too, but I think this is better now. We had a, I had one of the conditions I think backwards. Um, so the third condition wasn't even necessary. And the deceleration, this is the part I was actually worried about getting wrong, uh, seems to actually work. So that's good, right? It decelerates. If I let go when I'm pressing backwards, it decelerates. And if I let go when I'm pressing forward, it decelerates. So I'm, ha I'm very happy with that, actually. I think that's some nice looking uh, maneuverability. All right. Uh, so let's just recap what we've done today. I've added in, uh, I showed you how to add sound effects. I showed you how to, how to actually do it properly so they can play over each other by creating an array. Um, an array of these sound effects which are identical but which can um, be running be therefore at the same time so you make 12 copies of the same thing and you say hey sound number one you play sound number two you play sound number three you play sound number 12 you play okay I'm going back to sound number one yes I know it just started at zero but you understand what I'm saying it goes in the loop and there's always a next sound ready to play because Greenfoot can't play the same sound twice at once and it's so easy to work around that we talked about music. Um, we had music. We learned that we can start it in the started and stopped methods, which is really going to improve the user experience. And from the perspective of the guy who marks it, it makes a huge difference because every time I want to pause to like think and type stuff about your program, the music doesn't stop. And that's super annoying. Uh, as you can imagine, you want your user to have a good experience. So started, stopped, very easy to implement. Just a couple lines here and there. And it, um, it makes a huge difference. And then um, finally, uh, we added some simple graphics to the player. Uh, so we took our um, we took our player's image. I showed you paint.net and we added some a little visual effect here, a second image. and I showed you how to switch between them. Uh, so now we have this image when we're moving when we're accelerating and we get this image in all the other cases, right? And that actually gives us a really nice sort of directional feel of which way we're coming from slash which way our, um, our, our ship is currently pointed because before it was a triangle and I tried to make it not a, not, what is it, not the three equal, that's not equilateral, it's a, uh, you know, I wanted it not to look like you'd be ambiguous which way you're pointing. And it was kind of when I was playing it, so I thought this would be a really good way to fix that. And we also made it so that the player can move backwards, which I think is important in a game like this. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to right now post this on the Greenfoot Gallery in the same spot you found it last time. And so it's going to say updated with changes from part two. And so now you can go grab what I did today if you're interested. Um, and you can um, have fun with it. Do with it as you please. I will continue this next feedback day. Well, I'll think of, well, I know I'm gonna add enemies next time. I think I'm also gonna give the player a shield. Uh, you know, you press a button and you're protected for a few seconds, maybe with a cooldown. So I've got some ideas of how we're gonna continue to develop this. It's now on the gallery for you. Uh, you can go find that. I'm Mr. Cohen on the Greenfoot Gallery, but it's the most what's happening right now if you're interested. And I think that's all I got for today, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in. I saw that I had, you know, quite a few of you, as many as eight or 10 people at a time, 25 people have popped in. I think that's what this means. I don't know, not my common platform, but I hope it was enjoyable. Um, I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me by email uh, with your questions. If you have questions when you start to look through the code more closely, I'm always happy to help you dive in for my grade 12s. I do really think that this is going to give you, you know, watching scenarios like this is going to give you the skills that are going to really help you when we get to our next project. And if you're in grade 11, just trying to get ahead, I think in a different way, the exact same thing, because we're also going to do a Greenfoot project later on in grade 11. Anyway, guys, have yourselves a great rest of your feedback day. I will see you all in online or in classes tomorrow. Have yourselves a fantastic day, guys. Bye-bye.